For this video, I will cover more of the basics of brick filming that are covered in the first episode. If you haven't watched the first episode, it's an introduction to brick filming and where to get started if you've never done it before. There's a link in the description below for the video. Welcome to the Brick Filming Guide. In the last video, we set up our camera and animated this small clip. In this video, I'll be going over more fundamentals that you'll need for a brick film. First of all, let's talk about making things secure. Having your camera and set secure is crucial to minimize inconsistencies like set bumping. Set bumping or bumping the camera can cause your shot to look inconsistent, which can be very distracting in your film. To minimize this, make sure your set and camera is secured and won't move. To secure your set, you can use sticky tack on the corners of your set or base plate, or you can tape down the edges. For the camera, the best thing to use is a tripod if possible. However, if you've not got one of those, building a secure rig out of Lego and tacking that down will be sufficient. Moving on to the tripod, you can anchor this down with sandbags or something that can ensure that the legs won't move if you accidentally knock it. Now that your setup is fully secure, let's move on to lighting. Lighting is a very important aspect of any kind of filmmaking as it can dictate the mood and setting of your film. An easy and low budget way to light up your scene is by using desk lamps. Desk lamps are very easy to get a hold of if you've not already got them. You can also find them with goosenecks that allow you to adjust and reposition them to your desired angle. By using two of these desk lamps, I can easily light up my character and my scene, ready to start animating. Quick tip. You can make your light softer by diffusing your lights with paper. Simply attach some white paper over the front of your lights. This will help soften the lights against the plastic of your Lego and even out your lighting. Doing this can also help prevent light flicker in your shots. Moving on to set design. The set is the world that surrounds your characters. This can be a key area that can help drive your film's story, theme and atmosphere. Here's some tips for your own sets. Build only what the camera sees, is a quote from Nathan Wells, who has an excellent series on designing sets for brick films. I'll provide a link in the description below. I suggest that you go watch them as they are quite informative. When designing your scene, it's good practice to turn on the camera and then build to what you can see in your preview. This way, you're not creating huge sets that won't be seen on camera. Doing this can save a lot of time and help you design the space to make animation even easier. Less is more. If you don't have access to an enormous LEGO collection like I don't, then sometimes you can use force perspective to make your sets appear larger. Force perspective is a technique where you make elements in your shot appear smaller or larger than they actually are. In my most recent Thack film, The Letter, I used this technique to make it seem like there was much larger ancient buildings in the distance. To do this technique, make sure your background elements are out of focus and far enough away so that you can't make out the details. Then, you can add your elements into the scene where you want. One crucial element to making a set for brick filming is making the set animation friendly. What I mean by this is making sure that the set isn't restrictive for you to animate with. If you make the set too small, you won't be able to get to your subject to animate with. And if there are too many details such as foliage or props in your set, these may get in the way of your animation path. When building your set, make sure that you factor your animation into the design so that you don't have any unwanted obstacles in the way while you are animating. So those are some of the other key things to consider when you are starting to brick film. If you have any other tips or techniques that you think are crucial to a beginner brick filmer, then comment below and share your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode of The Brick Filming Guide. Bye bye.